everyone, and welcome to Video Game Talk, the show where I talk to you about, you guessed it, video games! Do you like video game consoles? I bet you do. Unless you're one of those PC Master Race people who won't even touch a PlayStation. Ugh, peasants. And with the Nintendo Switch finally upon us, I wanted to take a look back at its origin and how things could have been much, much different. And I'm going to unearth a possible theory. Here's what we know. Thanks to an interview IGN did with a couple of lead developers over at Nintendo, we know that the R&D department was working on multiple concepts and designs at the same time, bringing in their best minds from the console and handheld departments. Eventually, the team put together the Switch and fully designed it as their next console. But nowhere do they say if this was the only team, or how long this process took, and why they needed to complete any of this so early in the Wii U's lifespan. And at one point, they said something that really grabbed my attention. It's when they mentioned that while watching how people enjoyed games, they made a transition from NX to the Switch. From NX to the Switch. This is really important because it signifies that the NX and the Switch are two completely different things. Remember the NX, rumored to run Nintendo games at a power even greater than most computers or even rival the PS4. But then the leaks about a portable system started to emerge. And when Nintendo announced they would finally reveal the NX, we got a trailer for the Switch. We all just assumed that it was the same thing because that's what we were led to believe. However, NX was just a codename that got leaked to the public, so Nintendo used that name in press releases. By the time we started to hear solid information on the Switch, like the leaked photo of the system, I believe that's when Project NX was on its way out, replaced instead with the Switch, which went into speedy production. So what was the NX, and why Switch? <laughs> Pun intended! Well, this leads me into my theory, one that I've had for a while, and I'm happy to share it with you now. The NX actually means Nintendo Xbox, as in an app for the Xbox One where you could buy and play Nintendo games. Was your mind blown? I can't hear from over here. Are you okay? Now that may seem like a stretch of Stretch Armstrong proportions, but I have my reasons. In May of 2016, I went to Nintendo's headquarters in Redmond, Washington to talk about the new Super Mario DLC for Minecraft. Why go to all this trouble just for Minecraft? Well, it was significant because it represented a joining of forces between Nintendo and Microsoft, who is the publisher of Minecraft. And if you don't believe me, just listen to this interview I had with Damon Baker of Nintendo. The close working relationship we've had with Microsoft, I think it's it's a little unprecedented. I mean, most people wouldn't expect Nintendo to be working so closely with Microsoft. Microsoft and Nintendo working together? This is insane. Is this the apocalypse? What's going on? <laughs> I think it's just a really good thing. They Their campus surrounds us anyway, up here in Redmond, so it's really, <laughs> really convenient for us to walk down the street and work with them, so it's been a cool experience. Nintendo and Microsoft at the time were both suffering losses for their consoles, and it seemed natural to establish a friendship. And with such strong rumors about the NX, it seemed inevitable that Nintendo would have to do something huge to dispel the stigma of the Wii U. At this point in time, I believe the plan was to create a platform app for the Xbox One that would handle playing new Nintendo games, possibly similar to the Nintendo Store. And with Microsoft publishing games for the Wii U, it seemed fitting that Nintendo would in turn publish games for the Xbox One. This would ensure that Nintendo would keep making money on their games without having to lose money on making a new console and make more powerful games that could be handled by the Xbox One's more powerful hardware, possibly explaining some of those early NX rumors. At the same time, it would benefit Microsoft by boosting sales of the Xbox One. Even MatPat of Game Theory went head to head with Reggie on the idea that Nintendo should stop making consoles. Of course Reggie won because he was a special guest, but everything that MatPat said still holds true. Pokemon Go and Super Mario Run have proven that Nintendo fans are ready to experience Nintendo games outside of Nintendo consoles. And after years of declining console sales, Sega finally has profitable years after ditching consoles and focusing on just the games. And if you think the name sounds silly, remember a little thing called the Nintendo PlayStation? 
Yes, at one point Sony and Nintendo had teamed up to make the ultimate console, but the two companies couldn't agree on things like distribution and profit percentages, leading Sony to make the PlayStation 1 a solo project. And I think that's exactly what happened here. Microsoft and Nintendo probably couldn't agree on a whole lot of after-the-fact crap. And this probably happened right around the time the R&D department presented a Nintendo Switch prototype to the head guys. And so, that is the transition from the NX to the Switch, maybe. But, I'm just talking, having a good old video game talk. And hey, if you like video games, check out the newest episode of Video Game Fights, a competition show where video game knowledge and how to defend it are the key. And as always, subscribe to Rich Alvarez. It's good for you.